Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Good One Comedy's first stream comedy night. Make some noise for your host, John Lennon. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Oh, my God. We're live, finally. Um, it's online comedy, but just like uh, real comedy, the show can never start on time, right? Am I right? Um, thank you guys for tuning in to Good One. It's our first ever online show. Um, we've got such a stacked lineup here. I'm very, very excited to have all the guests that we have tonight. Uh, we got a few rules on Good One. First is that we got a two drink minimum. Uh, we encourage you to have a minimum of two drinks. Am I right? Okay. Um, and, uh, and that's it. If you, uh, you know, you enjoyed the comedy, please donate. We're going to be uh, flashing some social medias and Venmos throughout the show. And I, we call ourselves good one, but I know with all of you watching, it's going to be a great one. So uh, let's do it, guys. Let's start the show. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Um, oh, what up? You know, so uh, I live in East Flatbush. It's a very Caribbean neighborhood. I moved here four years ago and I didn't know where to get my hair cut. So I just walk in the closest barber shop, right? You don't need to yell <laughs> everything. Um, all right, but it was like a Caribbean barber shop, and like I'm the only white guy there, and no matter what I do, I always stand out. Like everyone looks at me like the outsider, the gentrifier. Uh, they're <laughs> afraid that if I get my hair cut there, their rent is gonna go up. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, like, uh, you know, you guys, I'm sorry, but I had nothing to do with that Whole Foods. I, I just need a haircut, please. <laughs> <laughs> and like, I, I, I do crazy things. Like I call ahead and schedule an appointment. <laughs> uh, this is unheard of <laughs> in the community. I know, it's ridiculous, <laughs> unheard of. Uh, and then I'll show up at my appointment time and I'll see six people who were there waiting and they start yelling, yo, walk one the white boy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> my barber has to like, <laughs> leave his customer to intervene like like he actually has to stop a fight it's ridiculous um all right and then this one time um it was the day of my cousin's wedding i walk in i saw two out of the four chairs had been ripped out of their stalls all right i walked in and saw two holes in the ground where chairs should be all right it looked like a crime scene it had everything but the uh yellow tape and outline of chalk um, anyway the barber i knew was not there that day uh, I recognized one of the guys in the back. He was busy. And then I saw this fourth guy I'd never, ever seen before. He looked like an ex-cop, but he was available, all right? I had a wedding to get to. So I, uh, I stepped into his chair area, his uh, chariot, as I like to call it. <laughs> and uh, yo, I gave him a very, very easy request. I said six on top, three on the sides, all right? Any, anyone who's used a clipper before knows exactly what to do. And then all of a sudden, this man just goes at me with a two, all right? Yo, already, with the first swipe, he took off too much hair. And then the other barber gets involved. Like, he's like, yo, that's too close, man. And, uh, like, they start almost getting into a fight. And then, like, the bar guy cutting my hair says to the other barber, like, relax, relax, and gets in my face. And he's like, yo, I got this. You trust me? You trust me? You trust me? And, like, <laughs> real aggressive, all right? I did I did not trust you when I sat in your chair, all right? Um, <laughs> nothing makes me trust you less than hearing, yo, trust me, trust me. <laughs> interest, dude. I mean, I trusted you till you hit me with the two. Uh, and like, all right, imagine you're at a Starbucks and you ask if this is decaf and their response is, yo, trust me, trust me, trust me. <laughs> that coffee, all right, I would never drink that coffee. Um, I told you he looked like an ex-com, all right? And I say that because his eyebrows were shaved off and replaced with two dozen teardrop tattoos. <laughs> One for each guy that didn't trust him. <laughs> yeah, you guys, have you ever stared at a man's eyes under two dozen teardrop tattoos? <laughs> it's not a good look for a barber or, uh, or really any professional. Um, and I was thinking, it's actually kind of smart because if you ever don't like it, you can just grow out your eyebrow hair and it'll cover it up, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, I'm no expert with these uh, gang tattoos. I'm pretty sure the teardrop goes under the eye, right? I, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he, he looked dangerous, but I had to get my hair cut for a wedding. And I said, John, you know, don't be so close-minded, all right? 
you can get a good haircut in prison. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> sure enough, I sat in the chair. He cuts my hair way too short. I go to the wedding. I look like Mr. Clean after a round of chemo. And uh, <laughs> it, was, it was way too short. And then everyone's like, dude, who cut your hair? Some ex-con? And I had to keep saying, yo, you can get a good haircut in prison. All right? <laughs> trust me, trust me, trust me. <laughs> and trust me that we have an absolutely spectacular lineup tonight. Thank you all for tuning in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Thank you, thank you. Our uh, first comic of the night is she was featured in Vice. Please give a big round of applause for the one and only Sally Ann Hall! Yeah. to see everybody this is the most people i've seen in a long time and it, it makes me feel happy uh, <laughs> it's been rough i had the coronavirus sounds scary but you know what it actually did nothing for my career um, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm stuck here with uh my boyfriend who went to harvard uh for theater it's a uh, it's a little bit like going to juilliard for city planning <laughs> I no, I because I used to be like really impressed and now I realize if I inherit that debt of a hundred thousand dollars and be like oh well you know what it's worth it because now you can dance that specific way uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of dancing okay uh so I whatever we've been all like filling our time with nonsense I install the chandelier in my <laughs> very shitty apartment like broken <laughs> It's like, it does feel like a little bit like putting lipstick on a pig in that I'll only do it once. <laughs> <laughs> right, cor I'm, my quarantine jokes, everyone. Uh, um, I was thinking back to like the Me Too movement and how it's like, I think it's really, really changed men. Actually, I think they're a lot different now than when they started. Like one of my broiest friends uh, came up to me and was like, hey, I'm really sorry that you were raped. And I wasn't. Um, <laughs> but he was like so sincere that I like didn't have the heart to tell him. So I was like, thank you. That means a lot. <laughs> true, true. Some women do lie about rape. Oh God, stop. Um, that's, not the tag. that's not the tag. I, I got a dog. <laughs> I did. I got like a super cute little puppy for the depression. Um, and uh, it's weird because uh, my last boyfriend was like much like a cat person and I'm a dog person. And honestly, it's like not even a contest. Dogs taste so much better. Uh, how about a song? Uh, okay. I know. What if I just never touch this piano? <laughs> Um, guys, uh, on, on June 1st uh, is my 10-year anniversary of moving to New York. Woo! Yeah. It's so young, but yes, 10 years, and I'm going to be having surgery on my vocal cords, so I won't be able to sing or talk for a long time. You're welcome. For sure. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm Adele. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to sing you a song I wrote this week. It's new, um, about my looking back on my decade in the Big Apple. All right. I sing, but I do not play piano. Okay. <laughs> All right. I've spent 10 whole years in New York City, a magical place on earth. I arrived so young, so pretty, and filled with so much mirth. Then I barfed in front of a cop in Times Square. I had my first party. Did you know that it's just vodka? Then I wiped my mouth and asked the cop for a ride home. He was like, no. <laughs> then I moved into a shithole with a married couple who promptly got divorced. Ah, but that still wasn't as painful as when my other roommate suddenly got famous. No, good for her. <laughs> New York City, and I wouldn't change a thing except my career, my college major, and that one night with Shane. He still won't talk to me. Why, <laughs> Shane? Why? 
when I first said goodbye, was it all because I shared your bed? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think it probably was. Yeah. Anyway. I got my first job at the door of a nightclub where adjusted by the bouncers, looking like a bitch, like they literally told me, don't talk, just look at everybody like this. <laughs> 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 then I was fired and replaced by an actual model, and I showed up six years later just to tell them they're fine, but then I forgot my wallet, so they had to count my drink. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, no, please like, let me tip you. And they were like, that's fine. <laughs> and then I got asked out by Ryan Gosling's brother and the sex was lame. <laughs> and then I found out that Ryan Gosling doesn't have a brother. <laughs> and for years in New York City was a stupid thing to do. Cause it's uh, cause it's real rough and it's real shitty. But I don't have to tell that to you, Shane. Why, Shane, why won't you give our love a try? Oh, are you still mad about the doobie in your bed? I said I was sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's Woo. my song. Carrie and Paul, and Paul, everybody. Yeah. Ten years strong. Thank you. Oh, my God, you guys. Let's keep this show moving. Our uh, next comic, uh, you know him. You've seen him on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Please give it up for Stephen Rogers. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> I am. Um, I've been doing a uh, Zoom therapy recently, and my therapist's screen froze at the same time she was rolling her eyes. <laughs> 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 so you ever uh, you ever call an IT person to really just talk about your feelings? <laughs> <laughs> what I did the other day. I uh, I go to therapy. I bought the same couch that my therapist has. Yeah, have two safe spaces at once. It's pretty great. <laughs> you ever just have a place in your home to practice? I, <laughs> I go to therapy too. Like I've I've gotten too used to it now. Like I went to a I went to a regular doctor recently, and he was like, "Hey, what's what's going on with you?" And I laid down and was like, "Well, where do I start?" <laughs> uh, <laughs> I <think it's> my <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I do. I have pretty bad anxiety. That's why I go to therapy. It's also why I meditate. Well, first I got into meditation for those elephant statues, but the rest kind of kept me. Uh, <laughs> I just think about an elephant doing a pretzel style sitting really sucked me in. I um I have uh, a lot of <laughs> I have a lot of uh, mental issues. I I'm a, I'm a people. <laughs> you have fine if you want it to be. Uh, that was just I guess I was just confessing to friends, but. <laughs> I have a hard time like I don't want people to like see me do something stupid like I, I'm so worried about it. if you ever walk towards a door and go I'm wondering if I'm going to get this right that's <laughs> <laughs> like two options, and for some reason I think I'm good enough to come up with a third I uh I also like I'm, a, I'm, I'm afraid somebody's ever gonna like catch me talking to myself so if anybody ever does I just pretend I'm on the world's smallest bluetooth <laughs> uh, gotta go. Somebody. <laughs> yeah, I love you too. <laughs> it's uh, I don't know. It's an so uh, my name is Stephen Rogers, like uh, they said, and uh, I have the same name as the superhero Captain America, and uh, it's been a pain most of my life, except for one thing. It lets me know what everybody's impulse control is, just by when I introduce myself. Because I could be like, hey, I'm Steven. Re They're like, that's the same name as Captain America. And I'm like, yeah, take the keys. Uh, I'm not ready for anything that involves a motor vehicle. I, uh, I was actually named after the Alice Cooper song, Steven. And uh, my dad had me listen to it. And it's about a little boy who's trapped in his own nightmare. <laughs> yeah. And when I heard it, I was like, how long did you wait to name me? Because this is pretty. <laughs> <laughs> 
Like this, it's insane. And here's the thing, like I, I have diagnosed anxiety. Like there's no song that fits me better except maybe Big Papa. Like that's the <laughs> one. Part in the song where there's just a bunch of ghosts whispering my name. They're like, Steven, Steven. And I was like, does anybody else hear this part when they listen to the song? <laughs> <laughs> or is Grandpa back? Uh, cool. I, um, I, I'm, I'm with, uh, I'm quarantined with my girlfriend and uh, she says I apologize too much. And I really want to know what she expects me to say to that. <laughs> an issue I, uh, i'm attracted to uh athletic women and i like i'll, I'll say this too i'm attracted to women in sweatpants because whenever i see them i'm like ooh, maybe she won't want to do anything <laughs> but i like strong women like i don't want to see a girl dance on a pole i want to see how far she can throw it that's really <laughs> yeah and uh, my girlfriend, like she, she's be she's totally a strong woman. Like people, when they see us together, they don't think we're on a date. They think I got caught by a bounty hunter. So, <laughs> sounds pretty good. All right, that's it for me. Thank you so much. I'm Steven Rogers. Yeah. Steven Rogers. I'm so happy that bounty hunter let you loose. We couldn't have it without you. Um, all right, guys, let's get the show moving. Our next comic. Uh, you know her from the Good Time Gal podcast. Please give it up for Caitlin Palufa. There you go. I'm Lana Del Rey doing something. Okay. I want to kill myself. Um, all right. Uh, Monitor is very sad if you didn't know. Um, <laughs> listen to her when you just want to drink Chardonnay and think about jumping off a cliff. Okay. <laughs> I was for the white bitches in the room. Um, this is exciting. I am quarantining with uh, my boyfriend. You might have met him. He was a uh, big Papa Rogers. This <laughs> 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 oh, sweet little bitch, huh? Oh my god. <laughs> All. Um, he's sweet though. He's sweet. We're quarantining together. We're literally staying in an apartment of a friend who has two kids and uh, is summering in Long Island. So good for her. You know? <laughs> like nursery toys. Like just, I'm looking at the life I would have had if I had kept it. You know what I mean? <laughs> different world. Oh my God. But I've stepped on enough Legos to know that I made the right choice. So. <laughs> A little dark for you too, but that's okay. <laughs> Counting, I mean, there was a rave that happened to get me onto the stage. Someone got pregnant, obviously. All right. <laughs> My boyfriend, he's uh, sweet. Uh, we're doing well. Pandemic. I feel like every couple's got to go through a pandemic before they decide to get married. You know, <laughs> yeah, if you can't handle three <laughs> together, you sure as hell aren't going to be able to handle four to six years. <laughs> <laughs> My boyfriend is a small man, in case you uh, didn't have eyes. Um, <laughs> narrow, sweet. He's got the kind of body you just want to breastfeed. You know what I mean? <laughs> Boy, does he latch on like a champ. Okay. Um, I tell that joke just so people know I have tits. All right. <laughs> He is small. He is small, which I recommend, ladies. You know, dating small guys, they get a bad rap, but you should really date them. You know, ladies, get yourself a fight. You can win. Ooh, woo! <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, this one, please. There's going to be no crime of passion in our house. No. If he wants to kill me, he has to use poison, and that boy is not a planner. So <laughs> I'm going to live. <laughs> He's also younger than me. He's very young, which I like. Give me a 21-year-old. They still think my drinking habit's fun. Oh! <laughs> it's nice. I had box wine for breakfast. Uh, does it matter if you have abs you just have purple teeth? <laughs> anyway, thank you, honey. Um, he is younger than me. I didn't think our age was going to be a big deal until he gave me a hickey. <laughs> okay. I'm too old to be getting hit. Are you? I own a food processor. Jesus. Christ. <laughs> uh, let me make my pesto sauce in peace. God damn it! All right. Oh, oh I 
the punchline. I forgot the punchline. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is a free YouTube show, right? Donate. Yeah. <laughs> Donate. I should be different. Okay. <laughs> uh, my boyfriend and I would have uh, good sex. Um, sex ed did not prepare us enough for the real world. They did not. They taught us the logistics of sex. They taught us how to put a condom on a banana. Uh, what they should have done was teach us how to convince a banana to wear a condom. <laughs> part, part of the whole thing all right if i had those negotiation skills i wouldn't have hpv okay <laughs> have hpv all right <laughs> the way I like to do it. that was better right i did okay john huh absolutely yeah <laughs> all right i'm gonna be done now Okay. One more time for Caitlin Palufo, <laughs> the very patient and understanding Caitlin. Thank you so much. Um, our next comic is one of the co-founders of Good One. Please give a warm round of applause for Sean Gill. <laughs> Yo, what's up, everybody? <laughs> Give it up for John Lussman, your host. All right. Was that clapping for me or is it 7 p.m. wherever you are? <laughs> yeah, here we are in the Zoom room where comedy can bloom. My beard I did groom. Keep our heads above the doom and gloom. Locked down until at least June. I'm over the moon getting up in the afternoon. All right, I'm going to move this over so I can see all your lovely faces here. Awesome. I don't need to hear from Steve Rogers, but you're great. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> so I woke up today. That's a good thing, right? <laughs> uh, it? You ever wake up old? <laughs> Smelling like onions and old spice? No. <laughs> it's a little early in the season for crickets. <laughs> uh I'm still young enough to try new things. Like even last week, I, I started putting one space after periods instead of two. <laughs> <laughs> I can last 20 minutes in a mosh pit. Oh uh, yeah, I've been, been sleeping bad, terrible dreams. But I wake up and I think, oh, this is the nightmare. Uh, <laughs> people keep saying, when's an acceptable time to start drinking? I'm like, when can I stop? <laughs> like right before bed? Is that a good time? I've uh, been using a white noise machine to go to sleep. I can't use a black noise machine. They're just way too loud. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to keep up with that. Uh, you ever wake up racist? <laughs> How the fuck did that get in there? That thought was in my head before I went to sleep. I should just go back to bed. You know, or at least call into work racist. Be like, Jerry, I got to nip this in the bud. This stuff is spreading. <laughs> I wake up New Year's Day with a herpes outbreak. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else got a case of the herps? <laughs> Peter Wong? <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, Alicia Hush, you got? No. I can't believe you just called him out like that. <laughs> Christiana, Christiana, you got any of the herbs? Yeah, man. Fuck out of here. Oh, get the fuck out. What about you people out there in YouTube land? Oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> All right. So just me and a third of the population. Technically, this whole top of the row statistically should have it. Anyway. <laughs> Because at Lexus, we're here for you during this difficult time. <laughs> anyway, that reminds me, I live in New York City. They're opening up the rest of the country for infection, which, which reminds me that uh, why elephants never forget, because their parents died on 9-11. <laughs> Yo, I live in New York. I can say that shit. Offering 18 months financing, 0% interest. Think outside the box. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of movies. Uh, recently watched Schindler's List. Or as I like to call it, uh, the sequel to Sound of Music. <laughs> 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 I highly recommend that you watch Sound of Music first. Otherwise, Schindler's List will make absolutely no sense. 
My girlfriend, she eats vegan hot dogs, not me. They're made from the worst parts of the vegetables. Cucumber lips, <laughs> red pepper assholes. I've been, I'll leave you with this one last thing. I've been on my couch watching Netflix with my special duvet. I think everybody thinks their comforter is special. But now that I think about it, that's such a blanket statement. <laughs> <laughs> my name's Sean Gibbs, and that's my time. Give it up for your host, John Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Gibbs, I promise you, herpes cannot be transmitted over the internet. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, our next comic. She performs all over New York. She's got a live uh, uh, mic when we're at mics at Eastville and several films right now that you can stream on Amazon. Please give it up for Lana Sebo. <laughs> Hey! Keep it going for John! Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, John was talking about his yeah. uh, ex con uh, barber. Uh, that is my grandpa from Ukraine. Yeah, he was. <laughs> it's true. He's, uh, that's my lineage. Uh, I was a refugee. I came when I was really young. But I got to tell you, like, this quarantine, I'm grateful for, like, it, it made me even stronger because. Uh, it's been like with my seven-year-old son and my husband, it's been one long roast battle. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, he, uh, it's, it's like one long episode of A Sunny in Philadelphia that I can't get out of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm the female role. Uh, every time I walk in the room, they're like, boo, you ruined our vibe. Uh, <laughs> My husband is the three other guys, and my son is definitely the Danny DeVito role because uh, he's short and he throws up all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of amazed at my seven year olds like roasts. Uh, they're pretty creative. Like he edited my uh, business card. Uh, this is what it looks like at this point. Yeah, everything's mm -hmm. crossed out. Comedians <laughs> crossed out, actors, right? And I'm not even an and now. Uh, I think I could start <laughs> fresh, is, is what he's telling me. Uh, yesterday, we were watching 600 Pound Life, and I was telling him, like, you know, we, I think we have to eat better and, and, and exercise more. You know, it's, it's, it's scary. Uh, I, I don't want to be 600 pounds. And he's like, yeah, because you don't want to be on a really good show. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I can't, I can't complain too much because... Uh, um, my husband's working from home. My son is uh, schooling from home. And uh, I'm hiding in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's The Shining. That's what's happening. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's uh, kind of interesting. Schools, colleges, libraries, they're deemed unessential. Uh, liquor stores deemed essential. So, like, finally, yeah. the world has my perspective. <laughs> yeah i do i do hate this virus you know it's killing people people are losing their jobs but a close third for me is that i've had to talk to my mother every day <laughs> a few weeks ago i couldn't take it anymore uh so my mother was like uh, to my son like i pay you five dollars for five minutes i know that sounds dirty when it's an yeah. eastern european accent uh, <laughs> My son, uh, on the second day, uh, he lasted four minutes. He was like, $9 is enough. I don't care how much he pays me. So <laughs> he's got integrity is what I'm saying. I think he's got integrity. Um, yeah, I, uh, it's, it's kind of terrible. I'll tell you who doesn't have integrity. Uh, Trump, uh, he's <laughs> calling it. <laughs> Trump is calling it the Chinese virus. And, uh, you know, honestly, Trump is so old and racist. I think we're just surprised he's not calling it the Oriental virus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll end on this, guys. Uh, you know, we're trying to find the silver linings. And, you know, I'm learning a lot about uh, royalty. Um, yeah, uh, Prince Charles has COVID-19. And uh, thanks to Tiger King, I now know what a Prince Albert does. 
It's a penis ring. I'll end on a penis ring. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Can't have a show without a penis joke, am I right? <laughs> Thank you, Lana. No. <laughs> Thank you. Um, our next performer, he's the co-founder of Good One. He hosts the weekly mic at the pit when we're not in a pandemic. The <laughs> sexy. Yeah. <laughs> all right here we go yeah all i don't right. think that mic is ever coming back i really don't think uh, been that mic it, it's a four by four attic in in the middle of nowhere and it's done okay i'm no longer the, the pit mic host okay but um i am optimistic though because i'm <laughs> i'm watching the news lately and uh the, there's studies coming out that that they're on the right path to having a vaccine so i think we're going to be fine i i'm very optimistic about this even though uh, 30 years down the road, this vaccine will give us cancer, um, there will be a TV lawyer, right, that will tell us that we will be entitled to a large cash compensation. So, like I said, guys, we're going to be fine, okay? I don't know what everyone's worried about. I really don't. Um, I know some of the religious types say that this is, uh, they would say, like, something like this happening is part of God's plan. And uh, I understand that. Also, God never has a good plan, okay? It's never reassuring <laughs> when someone says this is part of God's plan. Why do we keep hiring this guy as our planner, okay? I think we, <laughs> I think we can move on. I think we can. Um, so I know a lot of people are going through uh, tough times right now. Um, uh, I, uh, Stephen was talking about uh, seeing a therapist. I know a lot of people are going through depression right now. Uh, depression is something that I've dealt with on and off ever since uh, I was like a teenager. I remember when I was 19 years old, I actually uh, sat down with my parents and I told them what I was going through. And they were very concerned. They really were. They looked me in the eyes and they said, how much is this gonna cost us? <laughs> and I, <laughs> I said, honestly, nothing. I mean, because you got to turn the blind eye to this like everything else. So I wouldn't worry about it, mom and dad, okay? I think we're good. I think you're good, okay? <laughs> So, uh, so I turned to the church after this. Uh, my parish at the time would have these things called healing masses. And what you would do is you would, you would go there, they would pray over you, but they would ask you what you're looking to heal. So I remember telling the lady this and uh, she looked at me and she's like, she goes, you can't be depressed, you're too young. And I <laughs> said, um, I said, I didn't know there was an age requirement for this. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so. Let me get this straight. So what you're telling me is that this gets worse, okay? I haven't even experienced what I'm going to experience when I get older, okay? I got so much to look forward to. All right. All right. I'm, I am looking forward to the future. I, I, I am. Um, but then she looked at me and she goes, don't worry. This is all part of God's plan. I was like, oh, fantastic. This is, this is fantastic. Uh, but I grew up working class, um, and it's tough explaining depression to like working class parents because they don't really understand that so to speak you know my dad was going around saying that i had down syndrome <laughs> my dad... <laughs> mike's... mike's feeling down right now okay he's got down syndrome <laughs> we gotta we gotta take him to a ball game or something you gotta lift him up but so <laughs> So a uh, working class, my dad was a copier repairman. That was the guy that would come to your office, take about, about 15 minutes to uh, fix your copier, and then the next two hours thinking that you were interested in what he did, you know? But listen, it's not, it's not a glamorous job. I understand that. Um, but, um, you know, it was, an honest, it was honest work, and we were comfortable. My dad was very hardworking. And he always made sure, I, I'll never say that, say against this, he always made sure that uh, he put food on the floor for us every night. So <laughs> I'm, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for that. And I'm thankful for all of you tonight. And I'm thankful everyone watching. And have a good night. Thank you very much. My name is Mike yeah, Malone. Mike. Mike Malone. Yeah. Hello. The very grateful and very Down syndrome free, Mike Malone. <laughs> 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 Our next comic performs all around the city. Please give it up for the one and only Alicia Hush.
Hi. Hi, everyone. Yeah. Uh, welcome to the floor of my dad's house. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I am very excited to be here, as you can tell from the way I said that. Uh, uh, I am I'm in quarantine with my family. Um, I'm in Texas, where I'm from. Uh, I found out the hard way that my parents are still sexually active. <laughs> Not how you want to find out. The hip surgery went well. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I walked in and they were doing reverse cowgirl, which is <laughs> gross. Um, but you know what? Also, that is a pretty advanced move for Republicans. <laughs> um, my mom's family is from a really small country in Europe called Luxembourg. Um, it's, they're, they're half German, half French. Um, full asshole. Um, but I, I had a cousin go from Luxembourg to Texas for the first time. And afterwards I asked her how she liked it. And she said that it was really good, but she felt uncomfortable because my dad took her to a gun boutique. And I was like, okay, you know what? Calm down. Okay. That was probably just a Walmart. <laughs> um, my younger brother uh, lives at home. Um, he goes to therapy and he just got diagnosed with this thing called proanoia. Uh, if, you, if you don't know what that is, proanoia is the opposite of paranoia. It's where you think the whole universe is conspiring in your favor. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, listen, I don't know how to tell you this, but you have just been diagnosed as a white man. <laughs> okay um i come from a very um attractive family and they've made it very clear that they think i'm the least attractive of oh. uh, uh yep this uh, sad for me and no one else um i uh growing up my younger brother's nickname was Bo, which is french for handsome and my younger sister's nickname was Belle, which is french for pretty and my nickname is buckskin uh, which is English uh, <laughs> for skin of a dead deer <laughs> not a lot of subtlety in that message okay our nicknames essentially translate to attractive attractive and leather <laughs> honestly the only person in my family who calls me by my real name is my uncle and his nickname is heroin Steve <laughs> Um, I will leave you with this. Uh, I um, I used to live in Florida. Uh, have any of you guys ever left a place because you start to fit in there? <laughs> Florida's weird. I saw on the news uh, the other day an article that said Florida man on the run after kidnapping dolphin. And I said, okay, here's a more accurate description of what happened. Florida man on the run after doing meth. <laughs> <laughs> also, if it's a dolphin, that's not kidnapping. That's just fishing. <laughs> so it turns out they're offering $38,000 in reward money for anybody with information about the dolphin. And the penalty for kidnapping a dolphin is just $500. Okay. <laughs> You guys, that's a business opportunity. <laughs> you could go to Florida, kidnap a dolphin, turn yourself in. That's $37,000. You don't even have to do the meth. <laughs> um, thank, okay, thank you guys. Very strong business strategy. I think there's a tip for Florida in our future. Uh, all right, guys, we're going to keep the show going. Our next comic, he's performed at the Stonewall Inn and has been featured on Mutiny Radio. Please give a big round of applause for Dan Frank! Yeah, Dan Frank! Everybody. <laughs> um, do I start going now? Okay, uh, all right, awesome. We're, this is comedy of the future, everybody. <laughs> You're on my phone, which is being lit by my computer screen right now. It's my lighting. 
Um, I've been using Zoom a lot because I'm a teacher in Brooklyn. I'm a music, well, before COVID, I was a teacher. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I've been trying to teach students on Zoom and uh, teaching in your house, you get way too comfortable when you, when you work from home because like uh, I've been starting to just like, when I'm in my house, I'll do like house things rather than when I'm at a school. Like when I'm teaching a student, I'll just start like eating a sandwich in front of them. <laughs> I'll start like moisturizing my face. Like I'll do like my daily hygiene stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm like, and I'm just getting way too comfortable with it. Um, <laughs> I'll just start like moisturizing my arm. Like, yep, keep doing the C scale, Simon. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get it soon. Oh, lost my lighting. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> just a mess that away this is the only air conditioned room in my apartment right now um i'm i used to teach pre-k in brooklyn um and i love i used to teach music to preschoolers which means i make up songs about food and the number five <laughs> for three hours a day <laughs> and uh, I love my job. I like working with four and five year olds. Um, there was this one time one of my four year old students was obsessed with the word poop. And <laughs> yeah, I was like, can you stop saying poop for like 10 seconds, maybe? And this four year old girl shouted at me, but poop is all that I know. <laughs> <laughs> that was her first existential crisis. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there was this also this one time, uh, I was teaching one of my five-year-olds and, uh, we were making up a song together and I asked him what his favorite food was and he told me it was broccoli and I was like, <laughs> okay, you're going to suck, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll keep going. And then he goes, wait, can I tell you a secret? My favorite food's actually ice cream, but my parents said that's not allowed to be my favorite food. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're going to do a lot of drugs when you're older. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say. I, you can't really, you shouldn't tell kids how to express themselves, really, because, like, they're going to do the opposite then. You know, I had a lot of rebellious faces as a kid. I wore a Rasta hat my whole senior year of high school. <laughs> <laughs> this soft redneck face wore a Rasta oh. hat. <laughs> and it was to cover over the fact that I was gay, really. That was the only reason I wore it. I thought the only way... To, appro to cover over my gayness was to appropriate a culture. <laughs> <laughs> they picked Jamaica, which is actually a really homophobic culture. I was like, yeah, I'm not the Fagat Man. <laughs> <laughs> no Fagat in this Rasta. <laughs> and then I'd go home and say that, and my parents would be like, maybe we should have let ice cream be your favorite food. <laughs> I've been going on a lot of job interviews and um, for a new thing. And I sometimes I wonder if I should come out during the job interview as gay, just to see if like, not to see if that would be a problem, but to see if that would get me the job, you know? <laughs> like if I should list it as one of my strengths. <laughs> Intelligent, punctual, gay, hire me. <laughs> and I wonder if I can like slip it in sometimes, like in the middle of like they'll ask me a question like, so it says here that you worked at your last position for five years. And I go, yes, queen. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha, Ma. I'm Dan, thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Frank. Frank, everybody. Yes, multi-talented. Oh my God. And, uh, and a comedian too. You should throw that on your job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our next comic is the host of the Sleeper Mic, now on Zoom. Please give it up for Claire Alexander! <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you so much. Keep going, please. Guys. Give it up for John, guys. Yeah. He's so great. John um, and Sean and Mike. Oh man, uh, this is this is fun. I've been staying at home in Connecticut with my parents uh, for the quarantine, which is um, it, what it is. You know, it's uh, it's pretty great. I uh, I sleep with us. I'm 23 years old, and I, I sleep with a stuffed animal here. Um, 
but it's it's okay because I never named it, you know, like <laughs> like I'm still an adult, you know. So it's just like sleeping with someone, you know. That's <laughs> that's what it is, really. It's it's uh it's great, you know. Um, I don't know. I've been uh, I I've been doing some online dating while I'm here uh, through uh FaceTime and what have you. I'm supposed to go on a FaceTime date, which should should be pretty exciting. I'm, I'm really excited because this way I, there's no way I can sabotage it by sleeping with him on the first day. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the safety zone. I feel pretty good about it. You know, although I am scared to find out what my second worst quality is really that comes out on first days. I mean, I have no idea what to wear either. Like, I guess I'll wear my good bracelet. I don't know. Like, what's he going to see, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm a little... I think d dating is is difficult, especially nowadays, because it's so hard to tell who's just, you know, kind of a jerk, because everyone's so woke these days, really. Like, it used to be, if a guy was going to be like a fuckboy, you know, you'd meet with him at a bar, and he'd be like, oh, this song's pretty gay. And you'd be like, okay, this guy probably isn't going to take me to see Hamilton, you know, like <laughs> but now, that, now that people say stuff like, oh yeah, I was just nailing my partner, you know, like if you say my partner, I'm like, well, this guy's got to be fantastic, you know, like <laughs> using terms like that, like that's so nice. Like recently I got ghosted by a guy who has two moms, like how was I supposed to see that coming? You know? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, he, he never introduced me to his moms, but, like, I, like, I don't know. I, that that was not in what I thought was going to happen, you know? I feel like fuckboys just used to be bad boys, really. Like, um, like, how bad boys are like, oh, yeah, like, I don't follow the rules, you know? But now that some rules are, like, super mandatory, they're like, oh, yeah, I don't follow the rules unless there's an international pandemic you know <laughs> <laughs> um, recently I, I went to the grocery store and someone whistled at me and I was like oh what a douche you know but then I turned around and like he had a mask on and I was like oh my god well maybe he's like different you know like, <laughs> wow he's really not like really not like other guys I mean basically all you have to do to be sexy is just like follow the rules man like like if a guy came up to me and just like said the law I would so be into it. like if a guy came up to me and was just like you know everyone should be able to say whatever they want all the time I'd be like that is so hot you know mm -hmm. like one time a guy bought me plan <laughs> b and I was like just the fact that you believe in that makes me want to have a baby with you, you know? <laughs> like like I was like it, 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 like I mean, he bought it for me and everything I mean I drove but like he bought it like, is, this, <laughs> is this our second date like you know how much it costs like it's crazy all right thank you guys so much yeah. okay. all right our next comic is host of the alone at lunch podcast please give it up for carly monta yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah hey that's actually uh the song that represents me the most so thank you so much um <laughs> i vibe very well with it um i uh i've been spending a lot of time alone these days and i gotta say uh i'm amazing <laughs> uh i wanted to teach myself uh to cook better so i bought a new microwave <laughs> i um <sighs> I can't tell if I've frozen if someone's just laughing very weird. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, it's not me. Great. Okay, perfect. So uh, I technically have a roommate, but mostly I've been living alone uh, because my roommate really only comes back every now and then to like grab some stuff and then leave. I see him maybe like once, I don't know, every week or two. 
And it's very exciting because he doesn't tell me when he's going to come back. And so I'm really living life on the edge in, in my apartment, okay? And it was so embarrassing because just the other week, he walked in on me as I was playing the ukulele. Uh, <laughs> it was so embarrassing. I mean, if he just walked in five minutes earlier, like I would have been naked. It would have been fine. But the ukulele, <laughs> <laughs> come on. I... Uh, I actually really want to spend this time to talk about arguably the most important event of 2020, um, the breakup of Mary Kate Olsen and Olivier Sarkozy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> for those of you who don't know, Mary Kate is of the Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen twins. Uh, you know her from Full House. You know her from uh, uh, It Takes Two and uh, most arguably her imp most important role, uh, sharing a birthday with yours truly. <laughs> uh, Okay, the craziest thing, when Mary-Kate started dating Olivier, she was 25 and he was 43, and then they got married, but things have gone crazy and she wants a divorce. However, because of the pandemic, the courts are not issuing any divorces, and so the only way that she could even get her divorce looked at is if she filed it under an essential matter procedure, mm. and so she filed it under an essential matter yeah. procedure. Okay. And I'm like, listen, I get it, okay? If if the biggest decision, the hardest thing you've ever had to deal with in your life is if you should make millions off of your clothing line or your movies, you don't know what an essential matter is. <laughs> <laughs> so her big argument is that Olivia is trying to kick her out of, out of their apartment. And uh, <laughs> at first I was like, how can he kick you out? But then I was like, oh, your size difference is so art is so crazy, <laughs> right? Like he's like six three and she's like five two. He could just King Kong her, pick her up by her tunic and throw her out the window. I mean <laughs> Is that what a tunic is? I don't know. Okay, what's that? <laughs> what's that? What's fashion? I'm not really sure. But you know what? Also I'm I <laughs> I I kind of understand the feeling of being kicked out of your apartment because I used to live with someone who would bolt the door if I didn't come home by a certain time and I didn't have a key to that lock so okay that's just something that I went through very cool um, <laughs> <laughs> to wrap it up uh I would like to summarize Mary Kate's relationship using only her movies okay in a New York minute two of a kind <laughs> now have so little time and are now in toil, toil. <laughs> double, double toil and trouble. Thank you guys so much. Okay, maybe not. Uh, one more time for Carly Montag, everybody. <laughs> All right, our next comic, uh, grew, you know, grew up performing in Austin and recently came to New York City right at the time of the pandemic to pursue <laughs> becoming a comedian. <laughs> Please give it up for SB Riva the Neva. Yeah. 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 What's up, guys? Um, how's it going? I'm SB. Uh, so I thought that I had Corona because I lost my sense of taste and smell, and then it just turned out all my meals are tasteless. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but then what happened was. I actually did test positive for Corona soon after that. Um, and I was like, you know, this is pretty good news because now I have a reason for my meals to be tasteless. So <laughs> it works out for me. Um, so Corona is like a tricky disease or virus because um, I've had like a lot of gastrointestinal problems because of it. So I'm going to need a colonoscopy. If you don't know what a colonoscopy is, they have to take a camera shove it up your rear which i think is very ironic because that sort of sounds like what would cause the problem like i picture getting <laughs> my colonoscopy mm -hmm. and then like putting the camera up and then after i'm like turns out there was a whole nother camera up there uh. <laughs> <laughs> um dating's hard uh because i feel like it's really hard to date a drug addict um i dated a drug addict <laughs> for a long time and it just sucks because you can be like i love you and they're like where am i <laughs> um, 
yeah, I dated my ex was such trash. He was awful to me. Uh, one time he tried to kill himself and death was like, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it can be hard now because I've dated so poorly in the past for my current boyfriend because he's awesome. Um, but I feel like I expect bad behavior. I almost like want it. I like the other day I was like, hey, babe, can you just keep my car like one time? It'll make things <laughs> way better. <laughs> It'll be great. Um, my parents are kind of intense people. They're from New York. And I remember uh, like they're always scared that their kids are going to get killed somehow. When I was a little kid growing up, I remember there was this hot summer's night and I go to open my window. I'm like, I climb in bed, wait for mom to say goodnight. And she comes in. She's like, what the hell is that window open for? You trying to get murdered, strangled, killed, <laughs> murdered, strangled, killed. Polly Klaus, 1993, the year you were born. She was murdered, strangled, killed. She left her window open. <laughs> I'm like, why are you telling me this? I'm five. (laughs) (laughs) But uh, even though like we're all adults now, like my siblings and I, they still do this. I was in California recently and um, I rented a Jeep one day. Not a big deal, I thought. I called my mom and I'm like, hey mom, how's it going? She's like, oh, hey, Espy, how are you? I'm like, I'm good. Rented a Jeep today and she's like, oh my God. Oh my God, a Jeep, Gabe? (laughs) Gabe? Yeah. As we rented a Jeep. Oh my God, a Jeep. Stacy, tell her about the rollovers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm telling her. Listen, as we, Jeeps, they tend to roll over because they're boxy. So, you know, <laughs> what happens is they roll over, then people get murdered, strangled. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll end on this. I, uh, so I'm from upstate New York, then I moved to Austin, and I was studying in college to be a translator. Um, so I get there and I have to like I go to this car lot to buy a car and I was so excited because the woman that owned the lot spoke Russian so I go up to her and I'm like oh and I'm like all excited because I'm like she'll she'll talk back to me right she just looks at me and is like but why do you know Russian <laughs> I'm an American spy. All right, guys, that's my time. Thank you so much. I'm so happy you didn't get moited, strangled, killed. Uh, our Fine. next comic, you know her from the Harlem Comedy Festival. Please give it up for Christiana Jackson. Yeah. 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 Hey, what's up, everybody? Guys, give it up for our host, John. Yeah. And our DJ, John. Yeah. Our DJ, proving he is a white guy who lives in the Bronx. What taste? Right? <laughs> Shout out to John Vogel. I'm so happy to be here. I, I live in Harlem. I am solo quarantining. So I've just been cooking and cleaning all the time. I feel like a husbandless housewife. So it's good to do comedy. <laughs> um, I'm not originally from New York. And one of the things that I love about living here is its diversity, right? Like, you can literally date men from all around the world. (laughs) So in over 10 years of living here, I've learned how to say, actually, I didn't come. In about 15 different languages. (laughs) 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 Uh, Because I look the way I do. I get asked a lot, like, where I'm from, what my background is what kind of black I am. Uh, you can put any guesses on YouTube, I'm sure, but I'll take anything because anything is better than the woman who thought that I was Mexican. I mean, <laughs> I wasn't offended, but I just thought to myself, if someone saw me walking around the background of Narco season four, they'd be like, this is some bullshit, right? What is it? <laughs> you know, when I think about it, I don't know if it's better or worse that I was in Mexico when this happened. So she had plenty of references, right? <laughs> I'll tell you guys a story. I'm walking down the street. I'm just trying to relax and enjoy my vacation. And this woman stops me and she asks me for directions. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know where anything is. I just got here. And she said, oh. You're not from here? And I was like, Mexico? No, I'm not from Mexico. And she said, oh, well, I'm sorry. I said, no, it's cool. It's cool. It's just, if I'm Mexican, 
then who are all these other people? <laughs> <laughs> also, why aren't we speaking in Spanish, right? This woman, the levels of ignorance <laughs> completely blew my mind. Uh, I don't know, have any, uh, has anyone here been, oh, sorry. Uh, then right after that, right? I was trying to relax again, trying to enjoy my vacation. And then this Mexico Mexican dude called me Chocolate Grande. <laughs> and I was like, thanks, but I really could have used your flavorful racism about two minutes ago. It really <laughs> 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 been the same. I, I don't know if any of you have been to Mexico before, but it's beautiful. You know, like the food is good. The weather is great. The only thing is there's not a lot of black people there. Like, I'm pretty sure during my whole trip, I saw maybe 10 Black people. And two of them, I'm pretty sure, were just overly tan Italian. So there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm actually, I'm from New Jersey. Uh, I'm from a place called Phillipsburg. If you've never heard of it, don't worry about it. But if you've ever liked to visit, just look for the part of the map that's labeled the hill people. <laughs> Actually, I don't say that I come from a town. I say that I come from parts. Like you guys ever watch an old movie and there's like a wild eyed looking white dude. And he's like, you're not welcome around these parts. <laughs> Those are the kind of parts that I come from guys. <laughs> to live here in New York. I've been here for almost 16 years now. And I have a rent stabilized apartment. I call it my cheap coffin, guys. I plan on that. <laughs> <laughs> One can wish, right? Um, that's my time. Thank you guys so much. Always welcome around these parts. All right. <laughs> Our uh, next comic was featured in Tosh.0. Oh. Please give it up for Peter Wong. <laughs> <laughs> all right good that's the correct music um, <laughs> hi everybody um so a little bit about me i'm uh i'm an illegal immigrant i'm actually doing this from a detainment center <laughs> <laughs> have great wi-fi there uh, i am an illegal immigrant um i uh i i came uh many years ago um, but I'm not worried though. I, if they do, it's a scary time right now, but if they do come for me, um, I have a plan. Um, I'm going to tell them that I'm from the Philippines because <laughs> I've always wanted to visit the Philippines. <laughs> <laughs> so, like if I'm going to be forced on a plane, let me get a vacation out of it. <laughs> but it's true. I am, um, <laughs> I'm illegal. I'm an illegal immigrant. It's a crazy thing to say because I grew up in New York my entire life. So it's very, <laughs> it's very weird. Like, I got here when I was one, when I was one year old. One, that's how close I was. If my mom had just kept me in for one more year, <laughs> she just <laughs> kept me in uh. her cooch. <laughs> I would have been an American, but um, it's not how uh, citizenship works. Citizenship is defined by uh, when you were born and the location of your mother's vagina. <laughs> and unfortunately, my mom's vagina was in China. I hate that it rhymes. I, do. <laughs> I don't know a lot about where I'm from. Um, actually, all the stuff I know about China, I learned from white people who just came back from China. Isn't that <laughs> weird? I was talking to my friend Turner, and I was, he had just lived in China for 10 years, and he moved back to America. And I was asking him what places I should visit if I were to go back. I just thought, what a weird, if like a person was listening to us talk, they'd be like, do I, am I having a stroke where my brain switches the races of people <laughs> watching? <laughs> um, I have a friend who uh, just introduced us to his uh, girlfriend. He, uh, she is 18 years old and he is 32. And um, it is a new relationship. I sh probably don't have to say that, but I feel like I should. Just <laughs> the new. It'd be weird if he's like, "This is my eighteen-year-old girlfriend. Been dating for five years. Uh, <laughs> met her in middle school. She's really awesome." Uh, it's it's interesting seeing a thirty-two-year-old date someone so young. 
someone that's 18, that's always interesting because 18 years old, that's the minimum that the law allows. So it makes you wonder if the law allowed it, would he go even younger? You know, <laughs> is your type uh, whatever you can get away with? That... <laughs> um, I don't know. Was that? I don't know if I'm. It's a. I'm, I'm careful of what I say nowadays. You know, like everything's kind of offensive, but uh, I also think I can take advantage of it. Like uh, now, when a girl sees me naked for the first time, I, I go, uh, "What do you think? Is it big?" <laughs> Or are you a racist? <laughs> <laughs> One or the other. I do. Uh, I have. I do. I. I, it, I think there is someone for everyone, though. I like. I have a below average size penis. I'm sorry, but I was at a bar once, <laughs> and I overheard this uh, lady talk about how she had a condition where her vagina was too small for a regular size penis, and then I stepped in and went, "Well, hello there." <laughs> <laughs> have you heard the story of cinderella all right all right next comic you know her from the new york comedy club please give it up for lindsey tyson <laughs> All right, that was, okay, let me, I uh, muted myself. Let's go to the little gallery view so I don't have to stare at myself. How is everyone doing? I dress a cat in a jean jacket for <laughs> other people and wore a matching track jacket. Okay. <laughs> but, um, what to talk to you guys about? I guess I could do, who are we kidding? Let's see. Um, I don't know. I feel like the pandemic has really changed a lot. Like I would say that last year, my dream trip would be to like to go to Italy. And this year I'm like, my cats are fighting in the background. It's just like the one cat got really jealous of the other cat's attention. Alicia's like, is Claire getting beat up? Yes, she is, Alicia. Nancy, <laughs> <laughs> <Messy>, stop it! <laughs> I'm like a stay-at-home mother. Like, it's so hard. It's like, you know, you got to stay sober enough to keep the cats apart and the laundry going. <laughs> <laughs> Not very sober. Just plot twist. You can be pretty drunk and do all that. Okay. Um, I'm okay. doing good. Um, this is what, another thing. I'll go back to the Italy thing in a second. I've noticed that when you were a little kid, if your favorite ride at Disney was the spinning teacup, um, you grew up to be an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is the other thing I learned. This is like the first week of quarantine. I thought this was really fun. Apparently, you don't have to leave your apartment uh, to black out and lose your debit card. <laughs> this is me. Like, every, every, uh, I'm always like, this is the last time I'm going to get drunk this quarantine. <laughs> every six hours. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I like too I mean this is like our civic duty I'm gonna have to tell my nieces and nephews one day I'll be like the pandemic hit and they'll be like what did you do to save society and I'm like I just sat inside on my couch and I drank <laughs> and then when bars reopened I drank twice as much to support them <laughs> another thing we're gonna have to do they're gonna need our business okay um <laughs> Can't go to rehab yet. Uh, <laughs> once the economy's up and running, that's when I'll go. Then I'll support the rehab. Um, <laughs> hey, Sammy, <laughs> um, what else? I'm glad that magic is gone. I don't like magic. Um, <laughs> Alicia and Carly went to a magic show and I got upset about it. So, <laughs> it's true. So Carly, you like magic, don't you? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> I hate it. This is why I hate magic. If I wanted to watch a lie being performed, I would go to church, you know? <laughs> <laughs> or watch one of Trump's press conferences. Okay, that was good. That was really political. Um, another little political bit for you. Um, Joe Biden, I'm voting for him, preface this bit. It's just, you know, wh whatever. I'm not going to go into that. Anyway, um, this is what I'll say about Joe Biden. I do believe that Joe Biden raped that woman the actress Tara Reid. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know it's not her, but that's what we all picture every time, you know? <laughs> anyway, I believe that Joe Biden raped Tara Reid, but I also believe that he does not remember doing it. 
<laughs> All right, I'm going to tell this joke since I've been talking about being a drunk cat housewife. I did have a job once, one time. Um, I was very bad at it. I got fired. Anyway, um, when I told my mom about it, when I told my Bathy, stop it. Mommy's doing her joke. Um, <laughs> when I told my mom I got fired, oh my God, she was <laughs> my job she was very judgmental about it she was like Lindsay <laughs> I've never been fired from a job and I was like mom like you were a stay-at-home mother who <laughs> lost custody of her children <laughs> <laughs> like you've been fired from a job uh <laughs> I don't know why I told that joke I must lose custody of these cats Bessie stop it <laughs> <laughs> To our final performer of the night. Oh my god, it's gone by so quickly, but we have saved uh, one of the best for the last. Please give it up for Adam Minula! <laughs> wow, the music choice. Okay, that's great. That is fantastic. I, uh, I think I'm, I'm last because I'm Canadian and, and uh, you knew I'd be polite about it. You know, I you know, I can't complain because it's not in my DNA. Um, what a mess. What a mess we're in. Uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't be in this mess if we had all just had an apple a day. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all need to share the view, but haven't been eating your Granny Smiths. You're the responsible. For this, so. um, these shows are fun. Thanks for doing this, John. The good, good one, folks. Thanks for having me. Um, these are really fun. I do think though that like when, when live comedy comes back, comedians are gonna be rusty. Um, I wonder if like a brain surgeon ever took like six months off and when he went back, he was like, well, didn't expect to do that well the first one. <laughs> 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 Much to my surprise, I killed. Um, that's, that's, yeah. I, uh, what a year though, 2020. Like my, uh, my New Year's resolution was to be more optimistic. <laughs> so, it should have been to have better timing um yeah. I know the social distancing has been easy though um i think it's because my whole life i've been emotionally distancing <laughs> so, now i just don't commit from further away mm -hmm. it's not <laughs> not a problem my new definition of a close talker is anyone within five and a half feet <laughs> I, uh, I was out today on my walk i actually saw a guy he had a clove of garlic around his neck. I'm like, are you, is that, is that to prevent the coronavirus? Are you confusing vampires and bats? <laughs> he didn't have a mask on, uh, but it was working because no one would go within 20 feet of him. So yeah. I think he, maybe he was doing the right thing. I don't know. Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine this afternoon. We were just talking about like when this might end. Like no one knows, right? But like, is it weeks, is it months? And he's like, I just can't wait to get out there and hug a stranger again. <laughs> Yeah. Like, wow, we have very different priorities. Um, also, like that was never okay. <laughs> and then he's like, well, we can't, you know, how are we going to greet each other? Like we can't hug, we can't shake hands, we can't fist bump. What are we going to have to do? Like elbow taps, like foot taps. I was like, how about hello? <laughs> why, why do we need to find a way to touch each other? Uh, I don't know. Is that just me? I don't know. <laughs> I think we will get through this. Like, I'll bet you in like 1918, during the Spanish flu pandemic, people were saying the same thing. They were saying life will never be the same. Uh, and they were right. Like not two years later, uh, women could vote. <laughs> I'm, I'm an optimist, I guess. I don't, know. Um, I don't like confrontation. I don't like making people uncomfortable. Uh, one of the last dinners I went out to before the lockdown, I ordered a burger. And they brought me a salmon, so I ate the salmon. Uh, <laughs> I didn't pay for the salmon. <laughs> yeah, they charged me for Arctic char. 
<laughs> Never going back to Denny's. I um, <laughs> my uh, a friend. I was asked recently how I would describe myself from when I was in my twenties, and I said, "Well, you know how in some romantic comedies, at some point in the movie, it just says six months later, and then it ch time jumps six months." Um, yeah, I'm the guy she met and ghosted during those six months. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not in the movie, but I'm critical to her emotional <laughs> journey. Like if there was a, a cast list of implied characters, I would be forgettable Tony. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks everybody. This has been so much fun. Thanks for having me. And for all of the amazing and sensational comics that have been so generous to donate their time to us tonight, please think about donating a little to them. Uh, one more time for all of the comedians that perform tonight. To our host, me, and our tech, John Vogel. Follow a good one on social media. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and good night. Thank you so much. Thank you.